Hey guys, hope you're having an amazing day today. My name is Steve. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to be reacting to why Americans and Brits say cider to mean very different things. I came across this video and I found the title to be very intriguing. I have no idea what they mean by Americans and Brits mean very different things when we say the word cider. You know, in my experience, cider is basically a spiced apple juice. You'll usually find it at farmer's markets and whatnot during the fall, and it's absolutely delicious. I love apple cider. And I do know that in the US, we also have something called hard cider, two separate things. Hard cider is the alcoholic version of cider. Um, I've only had that version of cider maybe once or twice in my life. I do remember I liked it, but it's just not something I've ever really got into drinking all that often. Um, but like I said, I absolutely love cider. And so when I came across this video, I was really curious, what do British people mean when they say cider? Because I know what I mean when I say cider, but obviously you guys may mean something very different from what I know as cider. So anyways, guys, enough of my rambling. Let's go ahead and dive in and learn why Americans and Brits say cider to mean very different things. Most of the English speaking world, this delightful, relatively low alcohol fizzy drink made from apples is known as cider. Okay. Here in the United States, we call this cider. This is also made from apples, but it has no alcohol at yes. all and it is not fizzy. We have the fizzy boozy stuff here in the United okay. States too. In fact, it's actually been the fastest growing segment of our alcohol market now for over a decade. I didn't know that. But we do not call it cider. Instead, we call it hard cider. Hard cider, yes. This okay. we call cider. And this we call apple juice. And when it comes to food and drink, this is one of the most divergent features of United Statesian English. No other Anglophones anywhere else in the world distinguish between these three products in the same way that we do. With the possible exception of a few confused Canadians under our dubious influence. Why do we call this hard cider? What exactly is hard about it? And what is even the difference between American apple cider and apple juice? Come Okay friends, let us seek these answers together. Historically, even apple hasn't always meant apple, not in English, not what? in lots of Indo-European languages. The word we use for apples today was once a generic word for pretty much any fruit. And in this sense, fruit is a generic word for any edible bulbous growth on a plant, not just the what? ones that meet the strict botanical definition okay, of I didn't know fruit. That. All of this is to explain why the French still use their word for apple to describe potatoes. Palm. That's weird. <laughs> um, so basically, you guys, when you say cider, you always mean something alcoholic then. Is that what I'm getting here? So that's, that's, that's the main difference here is that when you say cider, if you tell me, hey, I'm going to go get some cider, you 100% mean you're going to go get something alcoholic. When if I said I was going to get some cider, I wouldn't be talking about an alcoholic beverage. Okay, so that's number one. That's some of, one of the main differences. But then there's, what would you guys call cider that isn't alcoholic? Because cider and apple juice here are two different things apple juice is just basically the juice of an apple period the end cider has a it has some spice to it i think i think they put nutmeg and some other spices into it to turn it into cider and it's fermented um, if i'm not mistaken uh but it's not alcoholic so okay so i kind of get what he's saying here but i'm still confused on you guys obviously, I'm guessing, would have a beverage that we would consider cider that's non-alcoholic. What would you call that? Huh, maybe he'll get into that. De terre, apple of the earth. That's what they call potatoes in French. And because French apple is generally regarded as high class within Anglophone society, English-speaking chefs will often list mashed potatoes on their menu as pom puree. And I've always wondered why pom puree describes mashed potatoes and not applesauce, and now I know. Anyway, in English, they use okay. the word apple to describe any fruit as recently as the 17th century. This wow. is despite the fact that Malus domestica here had been very popular in 
Britain since at least Roman times. The wild ancestor of the apple is native to Central Asia. Alma is the Kazakh word for apple, hence Almaty, apple town. But the Romans spread domesticated varieties all over their empire. Subsequent Germanic settlers in England loved apples, and then the French-speaking Normans brought even more varieties to Britain following their conquest of 1066. Indeed, apples were referred to as palm in English well into the modern period. Apples and pears. And apples loved Britain. Perfect climate there for the I, trees. Yes, And I the Brits that. grew so-called dessert apples for eating, like this. It's a dessert apple, one you just eat. And they also grew cider apples for juicing. According to the Oxford English Dictionary here, cider and its etymological ancestors have basically always referred to some kind of alcoholic beverage, going back to the Hebrew word shekar. Wow. Leviticus 10.8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink when you go into the tabernacle. Strong drink, or intoxicant in Hebrew, was shekar. Latin Christians translated that to sicara, which became sidro in Italian and sidra in Spanish, and sidra or something in Old French. And then the Normans brought that to England, where it became cider. No the OED's kidding. first record of the term apple juice is from early modern English. I can't can't find any Middle English term to describe the non-alcoholic product. And maybe there's a... So, cider has always meant an alcoholic beverage. So, when you guys call this alcoholic beverage made from apples cider in the UK, you they basically are correct. Why in the world would we call it cider? What? I have no idea. I, like, it doesn't even make sense now that I'm like knowing why would we not have the same term for that since it's basically the correct version of what you're calling that drink. Eh, anyway, the reason for that apple juice wants to become alcoholic. That is arguably its natural state. Where I grew up in central Pennsylvania, there was an orchard down the way from us that sold unfiltered apple juice pressed from late season apples. This is what we call cider in the United States, unfiltered or cloudy apple juice. And because the stuff we got from that orchard was also unpasteurized, it had not been heated to the point of killing all the microorganisms in here, my older brother Tony would just take these jugs <laughs> and he'd put them into his bedroom closet and let them ferment. Yeah. You did nothing to them, just <laughs> held them there at room temperature in his closet. And after a few weeks, the tops would start to kind of buckle from all of the CO2 pressure building up in here. And then he would drink it. It was probably a relatively low alcohol, sparkly cider. For the record, kids, I don't recommend that. There's also a lot of bacteria that could propagate in there. But anyway. So I, he's calling cider basically unfiltered apple juice. And maybe that's correct. In my experience, though, every time I've ever tried cider, it's always had other spices in it, like nutmeg and stuff. So that's what I was associated with cider. And what he has here is basically I would just call apple juice. I mean, that's like the type of apple juice I would make in my juicer at, here at home. Um, so base. OK, that's interesting. So you guys would literally probably call what I know as cider. You would just call it apple juice or unfiltered apple juice. Um, it has a lot of the pulp and the puree kind of in it still. Um, the foam and all that stuff. That's interesting, man. I love an apple. Apples are great. Apples are naturally honey, covered Chris. in yeast. If you take unwashed apples off the tree and you smash them into juice and don't boil it or do anything else to it, within a couple of weeks, it'll probably be a weak alcoholic beverage. And historically, people would have allowed that to happen to make this a safer drink. Like we said, there's also potentially some bad bacteria on the apples and the alcohol can help control those. The result is a That's nutritious, true. tasty drink that may be safer than the average peasant's local water supply and wow. has a low enough alcohol content that you can give it to children, which they did. All of this is to say is that That's until so cool. very recently, cider has always been a word that meant apple beer. Well, technically, I guess it's closer to wine than it is to beer, though most stuff on the market is carbonated and maybe five to 10% alcohol like beer. So I think in effect, it's closer to beer. Over here at Maryville College, the beer brewing chemistry professor, Dr. Nathan Duncan, is making his first hard cider, as we Americans would call it, hard cider. He's got pasteurized apple juice there. Uh, this is from Honeycrisp apples, not from Concentrate. I Love read Honeycrisp. that this is a good way to make cider if you're making it for the first time. 
They heated it at the processing plant to kill any microorganisms, including the yeast, so he's got to add yeast back in. So for this one, I am going to use a British ale yeast that I also read online that some people say makes really good ciders that um, are well-rounded, so I don't know. It's just an experiment, and here it is a few weeks later. This is just fermented apple juice. It's starting to clarify over time. The sediment down here, that's yeast, some of it. It's also, some of it is just pulp, because like I said, it's unfiltered apple juice. Which, right. again, is what we Americans call cider, unfiltered apple juice. Though thanks to the yeast, this has now become what the rest of the Anglophone world would call cider. Now with this, it, it's running at a little bit below, uh, it's like one point, 008. He's talking about the sugar content. Dr. Duncan can inductively reason that sugar is now alcohol, and so this is probably about 5% alcohol. Yes, brewing pedants, he knows that's a very rough estimate. It is, in fact, a very bland cider. It doesn't have a lot of, <laughs> doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. I'm gonna see if I can get it. It smells great. This one. It does, yeah, I think it needs a little more time. Indeed, it smells way better than it tastes. Alcoholic ciders are generally made with apples that are not very good for eating. They may be very oh. harsh, very astringent from their high tannin content, but those qualities give depth and body to the fermented cider. Mm. And when English colonists arrived here in the land they called New England, they found a climate very hospitable to orchards, and they planted both dessert apples, apples and cider way. apples. It's a true story that when the pilgrims sailed to the New World, they brought braced a broken beam on the Mayflower using an iron screw from their cider press. They knew what they planned to do with their new orchards. Alcoholic apple cider, which of course would have been a redundant term to them. Alcoholic wow. apple cider became a staple of the typical Anglo-American colonial homestead. Later waves of German immigrants, they brought beer, that was their thing, but for the English Americans, cider was where it was at. They gave it to their kids, they used wow. it to make apple cider vinegar, which was an essential product for food preservation and for cleaning, and they converted it into much stiffer drinks. Sure, you can distill cider into brandy, but... That's incredible. So, cider basically, cider here in the U.S. is basically here because of England. I mean, you're the ones that basically brought the apples to the U.S. and now we have a ton of apples. You go up to, especially in the Northeast. Uh, I, I wonder how many of those trees got their start from being brought over in seed form from the U.K. Uh, that, that's amazing, man. It, it, I mean, obviously a lot of this country got its start from England. I mean, well, the country itself did, technically. So, uh, that's just amazing. All right. I had no idea any of this, uh, any of this really. Why bother during a frigid New England winter when you can just leave your cider outside? If you really want to freeze it, it takes liquid nitrogen temperatures to freeze ethanol. However, the water freezes at zero degrees and the liquid that remains unfrozen is going to have a higher concentration of ethanol because the ethanol doesn't freeze very well in the water ice. The resulting high alcohol hooch is called Applejack. And boy, oh. did they love that in New England and the parts of the Midwest where New Englanders resettled. But it was among those same people, those descendants of English Puritans, where the temperance movement was most fervent. And that movement eventually led to Prohibition, Prohibition, the period in the early 20th century when alcoholic beverages were banned all across these United States. Beer managed to stumble through Prohibition and the industry emerged alive on the other side. Maybe it's because the German immigrants didn't have the same uh, English puritanical juju in their culture? I don't know, but for reasons that historians still really, really argue about, the hard cider industry did not survive prohibition. It was completely wiped out by it. It was dead on the other side. From its ashes, though, came a new product, sweet cider, unfermented apple juice. And then the industrialization of America's food system gave us another new product, highly filtered and refined cider, which came to be marketed as apple, apple juice, juice, and so people called the cloudy equivalent cider to distinguish it. As I That's what it is. So they, ma they made this pure, purified, or uh, this form right here, and it's completely filtered. And so you had to have a w way to differentiate yeah, between the, you know, the unfiltered cloudy version versus this filtered version. And so they just called it cider. And then that's why we have to have the term hard cider to descri describe 
regular alcoholic cider, which is what you guys would call cider in the UK. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, that that kind of makes sense, but like you guys obviously have apple juice in the UK too. So I guess you would call both of these apple juice. Is that correct? I mean, you would call this non-alcoholic version of apple juice, you would call that apple juice, <laughs> right? Uh, like, why do we even need, uh, you know, to call these two different things then? Why don't we just call the alcoholic version of cider, cider, uh, or, or what we call hard cider, we, why don't we call that cider, and then call both of these apple juices, and one is filtered and one's non-filtered? That would make more sense. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get why we need to complicate this. I understand that you Brits have both of these, don't you? You've got what you call clear apple juice clear and apple cloudy juice. apple juice. Here we call this apple juice, and we just call this cider. No kidding. Because by the time okay. these products really emerged in competition with each other, there really was no alcoholic cider on the market here in the United States. Though, I'm oh. It came along during Prohibition, so there was no alcoholic cider on the market. So basically, you had cider and apple juice because during that time, there was no alcoholic cider. That Okay, now that kind of makes sense to me why this complicated way to describe these different versions of the same drink in a way, you know, it's just one's alcoholic and one's not. That makes a lot of sense because it just wasn't there at the time. I mean, sure, people were probably making these at their houses, obviously, but they weren't able to buy them on the market. So it uh, that makes sense. Okay. I'm sure that people with orchards still made it themselves right. at home. And when we Americans inevitably remembered how great alcoholic cider is, and we started making it again at a commercial scale, then we started calling it hard cider to distinguish it from sweet or soft cider, which we by then were just calling cider. Alcoholic beverages, of course, are hard, and non-alcoholic beverages are soft. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, this is a unique feature of American English. They have examples of that hard-soft convention going back to the colonial period. I would guess it's descended from an older feature of British English, where they described harsh-tasting drinks as being hard. Oh, Alcohol itself has a that, harsh taste, so yeah. maybe that's why Americans and started calling boozy drinks That makes hard sense drinks. to me. Maybe because the alcohol they were producing was less refined, less smooth. And there you go. There's the pretty straightforward explanation as to why we Americans call this cider and we call this hard cider. And thank you, Johnny Appleseed, the mytho-historical figure who planted apples all across this continent where, of course, they are not native. Did he do that so that future generations could eat? Or did he do it so that future generations could get sauced on Applejack? <laughs> that is a historical debate for another day. All right, guys, this was a great video. Um, going into this, I had no idea where this was going to go, but now it makes a lot of sense. So I, I was even wrong about what cider is technically is in the U.S. Now, I was partially right. Like, obviously, I knew it was, you know, we called cider a non-alcoholic apple drink. But every time I've ever had cider, it had other spices in it. Like, it had nutmeg, I think, and some other uh, spices that kind of go along with, like, the apple pie flavor in a way. Maybe the uh, ciders I've had have basically just been, you know, versions, different recipes people have chose to make. And I just assumed that all cider in the U.S. basically was spiced. And obviously that's not the case. Cider basically in the U.S. means a, a thick apple juice or an unfiltered apple juice. And then apple juice is obviously the filtered version. And then hard cider is the alcoholic version. You guys just have cider and apple juice. And he said something about clear clear apple juice and cloudy apple juice, I believe is what he said. Is that how you guys describe these two different versions of apple juice? Would you call what we call cider, would you call that um, cloudy apple juice? That's what I think he's getting at here. This was interesting. And I'm now wanting to explore some real cider or hard cider because it's something I've never really explored. I think I've drank some hard cider a handful of times. You know, I, it's been so long, I don't even remember. I know I have. I know I've drank it at some point, but it's just something that I haven't done very often. Um, so uh, I would be really curious to see what a good cider 
taste like. And I'd also like to have some really good apple juice as well, although I, that could, I can make that myself here. Um, but anyways, guys, this was really interesting. Um, I've also heard that you can make cider from pears, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let, me go, let me know, guys, what do you think of cider? Your version of cider, the stuff we would call hard cider. Do you love it? Do you not like it? Um, I think I'd really like it. Um, it's, like I said, it's been a long time since I've tried it. Um, but from what I remember, I did think it was pretty good. And I love, I love thick apple juice, what we call cider. So I think I would definitely enjoy some good hard cider. Uh, but anyways, guys, enough of my rambling. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.